Good morning. This is looking at what are different kinds of microscopes. First of all, we're going to take a look at what a dissecting scope looks like. This one is a dissecting scope. Notice how there's a lot more space right here. Um, that's so that you can make a, um, make a slide or look for stuff that isn't already in a slide and make it a slide. So notice how there's two ocular lenses here and there's more space right here, okay? Then if we wanna look for a compound scope, this is a compound scope. Now notice how there's usually one lens, sometimes there can be two ocular lenses. Then there's additional lenses down here, but look how much closer the space is. And if we can change the microscope lenses down here, we can even get down to that close. So you can't really put your pastry dish down here because it'll get into the water. So you can look for tardigrades also with a compound scope. Just make sure if you are, you're at the, the least magn magnified um, lens. And the way that you figure out how magnified you are is by multiplying what the compound, what the ocular lens says. So this is 10x, so that's times 10. And then the second lens down here, and this says times 10. So this would be 10 times 10 would be um, 100. Or this is 10 times 40, which would be 400, okay? Or you have 10 times four, which would just be 40. So there's different magnifications. Then when you get to how you're gonna make your tardigrade um, Petri dish. First of all, this is a Petri dish. Petri dish, Petri dish, okay. They're different sizes. I actually prefer the smaller ones, but these are the ones we have right now, but it's better when they're even little, bit, little bittier. Um, and you'll need a Petri dish. You will need a pipette. This is a pipette. Notice how it squishes things out, okay. And you'll need your sample of mixture of moss or lichen and water. You need to, when you put your sample in here, you'll need to have your moss or lichen and then break it up and then pour about 50 milliliters of dechlorinated water. So that would be like, um, you could just use spring water or like we have water bottles, okay? So we've already had this sitting out. It needs to be sitting out for at least an hour up to 24 hours to lure the water barriers out. Then when you're gonna find them, you want to make sure that you squeeze the pipette first. So squeeze pipette. Okay, then you're gonna place it inside of the dish. I don't know if you can see this well. Okay, now vacuum around the bottom of the dish as you're letting go of the tube. Uh-oh, I've got something stuck in there. Okay, and as you let go, it's gonna vacuum up a mixture of liquidy stuff. You don't wanna get the big things. You wanna just get whatever is vacuumed up in there. You wanna vacuum from the bottom of the dish Okay, not the top because water bears are more dense than water. So once you have that, you're going to then squirt it into your Petri dish. Okay, this one's already dirty, but I'm just gonna show you what you're doing. Now notice how I don't have it all the way full. I need to fill it all the way up. This is why I prefer to use a smaller Petri dish because then this one squirt would be all that I would use and it would be in a smaller Petri dish. But right now we have these bigger ones, so that's okay. Just squirt it all the way until you get it all the way full. Once it's all the way filled up, then you're going to make sure that, I'm gonna fill it up right now while I'm talking to you. You're gonna make sure that you've got plenty of stuff in there, but it's not the big ginormous stuff. And then you're gonna place it into uh, under the dissecting scope, preferably use the dissecting scope. And there's two different ways that you can use um, a dissecting scope. You can have the light um, on underneath it or the light above it. Now, Dr. Miller has found that it's better to have the light above it and use a Petri dish that has a black background. I found that I actually prefer it with the light underneath and have no black background, but you can choose. Um, and sometimes the lights from above are not bright enough, so you can always use a flashlight in addition to see it better. So then, once it's time to look for a tardigrade, I'm gonna search through here. Now watch how I'm doing this, okay? I'm gonna look into the microscope Oh, I got a chair falling down. Okay, I'm looking through the microscope. I'm searching. I'm not moving the Petri dish at all. I'm scanning everything pretty well. Okay, and then I'm gonna actually, if I don't see anything, I'm gonna slowly move the Petri dish just a little bit over. Okay, and now I'm gonna look for him again. Okay, so I'm gonna search for him, search for him, search for him, and I'm not seeing anything, then I'm gonna slowly move it again. 
okay? Now, this is the trick. It takes a long time. Patience is a virtue. It took me months to find my first tardigrade. Um, and, I, and it helps if you look at lots of videos of tardigrades under microscopes, because then you'll be able to know what you're looking for. I tend to look for either them crawling around slowly. They won't be swimming, they'll be crawling. Or you can look for them based on how their bumps on their backs kind of look. Um, you can also look for legs. Things that you'll commonly get them mistaken for is thinking it's a tardigrade, but it's not, are like rotifers, nematodes, um, things like that. If it's a worm looking thing, it's a nematode. If it's a, it has these weird cylinder um, dishes in the front of their faces that have little hairs on them and they kind of propel themselves forward, then it's a rotifer. And then if it has little eight legs and it's crawling or it has kind of a bumpy back, it's probably a tardigrade. So keep looking at videos, try, 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 just patience is virtue and you'll eventually find one, okay.